Hi, I'm Aaron Dean, and this is Advocate Today. On the final day of Pride Month, the Supreme Court is dealing a major blow to advocates of LGBTQ rights. In a ruling rooted in free speech grounds, the justices sided with a Christian business owner in Colorado who refuses to create websites to celebrate same-sex weddings. Justice Sotomayor penned a dissent saying the decision will undermine the government's compelling interest in ensuring that all Americans have equal access to the public marketplace. Some are calling it a sad day in American constitutional law. I spoke with the Advocate's senior national reporter for more on what this ruling means to the queer community. This is the first time the Supreme Court has granted businesses the right to refuse to serve members of a protected class. So it seems like the court is systematically trying to roll back decades of protections. Yeah, you know, it's the first time, as you said, that they have ruled in this way. And, and, and what is really kind of curious is that this is all based on the hypothetical situation. The Lori Smith, the web designer in Colorado, you know, complained preemptively that she would want to advertise that she does not uh, serve LGBTQ couples when in regards to making a wedding a website. So the court has taken this approach to, you know, affirming a hypothetical situation and allowing a business to proclaim that because of a uh, uh, forcing them something that they don't believe would violate their rights and therefore allow them to to, to, to basically discriminate in this way now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also Justice um, Sotomayor called this, quote, a sad day in American constitutional law and the lives of LGBTQ people. But it's much more than that. You know, walk us through the decision and what it means for LGBTQ people in the public marketplace. Well, so it's unclear exactly what this will mean because these kinds of decisions, you know, haven't really happened until recently when the ultra-conservative majority took over the court. Some of the legal experts have said that this opens the door to widespread discrimination. Um, others have warned that or cautioned that the ruling uh, is, is fairly narrow in scope. Well, I, I guess not very narrow, but the scope of it um, is limited to making uh, companies making them say things that they feel would violate their rights, as opposed to saying that, per, you know, for example, that they don't serve transgender people, period, or they don't serve gay people, period. That's not, from what I understand, what this ruling says. This ruling says that companies have the right to refuse to, for example, write on a cake, gays are great, or make a website for, you know, an LGBTQ couple saying, their love is excellent. I guess those are the things that this, this case uh, or this ruling addresses in that way. And, you know, Justice uh, Sotomayor also says that this is, quote, a new license to discriminate, and it marks um, gays and lesbians to become second-class citizens, pretty much. Does this mean that, you know, queer, queer Americans will have to code switch or conceal their identities to do business or just to function? Well, yeah, that's what this this ruling opens the door to. You know, we're taking a huge step back as far as it's as far as rights are concerned in this country. And you know, I'll, I will note that it seems that the Supreme Court saves these kind of controversial decisions for the last day of their session before they go out on vacation because of the hard work that they feel that they've done, and they leave the pieces for the American people to pick up. And so. You know, there will be LGBTQ people who are turned away from services. It's hard, it's hard to really wrap one's mind around the implications of this because, you know, there, there hasn't been this kind of assault on rights before. We saw last year with the Dobbs decision that the Supreme Court stripped people the right of, uh, to have an abortion. And, of course, you know, Republican-led states around the country immediately moved to restrict or ban abortion. So, you know, while this isn't a decision where states will, per se, ban anything, what this does is really limit the ability for LGBTQ people to safely, you know, go and 
demand or access services that other people would have a completely simple time doing. And of course, the next big concern is a 2015 case that legalized gay marriages. If the court takes this up, do you think gay marriage is doomed or in jeopardy? I absolutely think so, and a lot of experts think so. You know, in the Dobbs decision last year, Justice Clarence Thomas uh, indicated in a concurring opinion that, you know, the the Obergefell case, which is the one that brought marriage equality to the United States in 2015, was perhaps uh, worthy of being revisited. And so, you know, this court, this very activist, uh, reactionary court, seems to be bent on removing the rights of all marginalized people that bring them to equal footing uh, by having been implemented by legislation recently or by other court decisions. So essentially what it seems they want to do because they want to adhere to strict textualism is bring the country back to when the constitution was written. And, you know, I spoke with someone yesterday who said, you know, part of the principles of this country that we were founded on was that all men are created equal. But that, that, that came out back when, you know, that didn't include black men, that didn't include women, that just included white men. And it seems that the pendulum is swinging back in such a way that all the hard fight fought wins that everyone has made for civil rights in marginalized communities are being stripped and erased because Republicans just don't want the country to become more progressive. Christopher Wiggins, Senior National Reporter for The Advocate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vice President Harris is attending the Essence Festival this weekend in New Orleans. Harris, along with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, are attending the festival's Global Black Economic Forum. But during a decision on Thursday, the Vice President responded to the Supreme Court's decision on affirmative action, which essentially forced colleges to no longer consider students' race in college applications. And I'm sure that I share the sentiment and the feeling of everyone in this room in terms of the deep um, disappointment. I I encourage everyone, by the way, to read uh, the the dissenting opinion of Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to read it because she is a beautiful writer who is compelled by logic and a knowledge of history and a clarity of thinking about where we have been in as a country and where we have the potential to go. Mm-hmm. And what she so rightly has articulated, as I take away from her writing and the way I feel about it, is the disappointment is because this is now a moment where the court has not fully understand the importance of equal opportunity for the people of our country. And it is in so very many ways a denial of opportunity. And the, the, it is a complete misnomer to suggest this is about colorblind, when in fact it is about being blind to history, being blind to data, being blind to empirical evidence about disparities being blind to the strength that diversity brings to classrooms, to boardrooms. The decision overturning long-standing precedent that has helped black and Latino students gain access to higher education. When California banned affirmative action in 1996, UC Berkeley said black and Hispanic representation on their campus dropped by 50%. The Supreme Court is also striking down President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, justices blocked the administration's efforts to deliver up to $20,000 in loan relief to millions of borrowers struggling with debt. Chief Justice John Roberts, writing for the conservative supermajority, says that the Biden administration would need congressional approval to execute such a move. 
President Biden is expected to announce new actions to protect student loan borrowers. And thanks for joining us for Advocate Today. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to stream us live, and you can even subscribe on our Advocate Channel YouTube page. For the Advocate Channel, I'm Aaron Dean, and this was Advocate Today.